Derivatives with the natural log function. Uh, this entire lesson is going through many different aspects of what you have learned all throughout this course um, and previous courses with the properties of logs. Then we talked about the limits of logs all to get to this point for the derivatives of a natural log function. And you've seen this one already. Uh, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. And we've talked about this. If u is a function of x, a function in terms of x, uh, then the derivative of the natural log of u is u prime over u. And in this last one, number 3 down here, this one looks a little different. Um, however, it gives you exactly the same result as number two. So I wanted to talk about this one just for a few moments. Uh, if you take the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the absolute value of u, uh, you end up with u prime over u, the derivative of u over u. So we have two considerations to make here, and that is first we want to let one, let u be positive. That is, let the function values be above the x-axis, or let the y-values of all the coordinates be positive. Well, if that's true, if u is positive, then we just end up right back there in uh, the second theorem. So what we really need to worry about is the second one, where we want to let u case 2, this would have been case 1, case 2, let u be negative. Uh, so what that means is that the absolute value of u equals negative u this time. So if we take the derivative of the natural log of negative u, since the negative is just a negative 1 times that u, we will first uh, leave the negative u in the bottom. But when you take the derivative of this negative u, like I had mentioned, that negative 1 is a constant. So it just comes along for the ride. So you'll end up with negative u prime in the numerator. And it turns out a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So it doesn't matter if u is positive or u is negative, you still end up with u prime over u. The one case this does not work, does not work, is for u equal to zero. So you can be anything, but you can't be zero. Let's look at some examples. Which include, but are not limited to, um, using log properties to expand to make life easy, um, implicit differentiation, and even finding critical values uh, for the first derivative of a log function.